Welcome to part 2. Here are the pipe sizes for our system. 1.5 inch for the drain line and 1 inch for the pump suction. How do we size the pump tank? Another guideline is going to help. Retention time. This guideline provides a minimum retention time. Retention time is the time it would take to empty a tank if all its contents were being pumped out while nothing is getting in. Once you know the flow rate, this fixes the minimum size of the tank. If something goes wrong in the system and no water is coming into the tank, it gives you time to react. Also, if you configure the geometry of the tank such that it is at least as tall as wide or taller, you will ensure that you always have sufficient submergence of the pump suction, thereby avoid the formation of vortexes and air entering the pump. There are ways to calculate the minimum submergence, which depends on the flow rate and pump suction pipe in diameter, but we won't get into that here. It is not typically a design consideration as normally the water level will be maintained much higher than the minimum submergence level. Now let's add a filter to our system. Since the aquatic life will be consuming food and create waste, we need to treat the water as well as recirculate it. There are many different ways we could accomplish this. I'm going to use one filter to remove the waste. To do this, we will, need, we will add another pump that will supply the filter. The main supply pump P2 will feed the display tank and another pump P1 will feed the filter. We now have a tank with a dividing wall which on one side has dirty water and the other clean water. There are two water levels to control. If we let the clean side overflow into the dirty side, this will control the level of the clean side. This strategy of controlling level by letting a tank overflow is simple and effective. It is used in many different types of industrial processes. The filter will create a pressure drop. This will affect our pump since the additional pressure required to produce this pressure drop will have to come from the pump. You may find some filters that are gravity fed, but I'm taking the worst case scenario. The pressure drop is caused by the action of the filter media on the fluid particles to clean the water and trap the impurities. The pressure drop requirement will be given by the filter manufacturer for a given flow rate which should match our flow rate. How does pressure relate to pump head? Head and pressure are two facets of the same coin. You don't have one without the other. Let's take a tank with a certain amount of water. The weight of water gets distributed over the tank bottom. This weight distribution against the surface is pressure. It is equal to the weight divided by the surface area. Using typical imperial units, the value of the pressure is the height z in feet divided by 2.31 for water with pressure in psi or pounds per square inch. So if the height were 10 foot, then the pressure would be 4.3 psi. If we put a pump and connect its discharge directly to the bottom of the tank, the pressure that it would have to produce to counteract the pressure produced by the water weight would have to be the same and equal to 4.3 psi. However, in the pump world, pressure is not used to describe the amount of work that the pump does. Head is used. The pump head is then 10 feet. No pump can run without being connected to a suction tank. And that being the case, there is a certain amount of pressure energy given to the pump via the pressure in the suction line. We need to subtract that contribution of energy from that at the pump discharge so we can describe what the pump is providing on its own. Therefore, the pump head will be the difference in level produced by the pump discharge versus what's provided to the pump suction via the suction tank level. The pump head will be Z, and if Z is 10 feet, the pump head is 10 feet. You may ask, since we always need a suction tank, why not just use the head at the pump discharge to indicate its capacity? Because the pump manufacturer has no idea what size tank you will put on the pump suction or what the water level will be in that tank. We calculate the head required to make our system work, including friction, static head, and equipment pressure drops that are particular to our installation. The manufacturer will give us the amount of head that the pump can produce for a given flow rate between the discharge and the suction connection, independent of any particular installation. Back to the filter. If the filter manufacturer says the filter will have a pressure drop of 3 psi at our flow rate, 
and we convert this pressure to head, 3 times 2.31, and we get 7 feet of pressure head drop. We add this amount to the head of the pump to make sure that it has sufficient capacity to supply the filter. We need to balance the flows in our system to make sure that we have a constant overflow from the clean side to the dirty side of the pump tank. If we use 2 GPM of overflow rate, then the pump P1 will flow will have to be 8 GPM. We will have to calculate the friction and size of the line on the discharge side of pump P1. If we use a 3 quarter inch pipe for a 10 foot pipe length, we will have 2.5 feet of friction head loss. Once again, I'm tempted to increase the pipe size to one inch to reduce the friction loss. And in this case, it would be 0.45 feet of friction loss. Pump P1 connected to the filter will need a total head equal to the static head plus the friction head plus the filter pressure head drop. Its total head will be 8.5 feet. Pump P2 will have the head that we specified earlier. The water level in the display tank is not controlled so that eventually by evaporation the level will drop and we would have to fill it up. That's not dramatic, but if we want a system that's as maintenance free as possible, we can add another overflow on the display tank. We will need a valve on the bottom drain of the tank to adjust the flow to the right proportion between the overflow and the drain. A ball valve is a good choice and they are readily available. There is one last level to control, the pump tank dirty side. The evaporation of water in the display tank is still taking place, and this is a good place to introduce makeup water. We could use a toilet cistern water control float valve, which is very effective and trouble free. In industry, they would use a control valve controlled by a pressure sensor detecting level in the tank, and this is exactly what the cistern float does on a small scale. The pumps you buy will no doubt have a larger capacity, more head and flow, than your calculations determine. It's better to have a bit more capacity than a bit less. Therefore, you will want to control the flow out of each pump to provide the flows you require to the different parts of the system. A ball valve on the discharge of each pump will help you achieve that.